All right, recording. So uh, for today's meeting uh, update on the CD Home, where exactly we are. So here's the link to the CD Home presentation. Let's start with this. What do we have? So this is the concept, uh, the actual. Do a slideshow, concept to reality. This is uh, as of July 2022. We're working on and finishing the inside still, still, still. Uh, this is a 2016 build, uh, aquaponics, first aqu first CD home version, uh, aquaponics turned into pool, interior, Global Village construction set still setting out to reinvent collaborative civilization. Now as far as the CD home, that's a key thing. We've got housing as a key need. So now we've got the photovoltaics on, on the roof. You can actually download all the assets now. So you can click on this house assembly file. It's both in IFC format and FreeCAD format. Yes, IFC, you've heard that right. That's Industry Foundation Classes. That's a simple export. You go into FreeCAD 19 and you can export as a an universally interchangeable file format that any building information modeling professionals can access also. So we've got various assets here. Now here's the foundation. This is the latest. Uh, this still stands with, uh, no it's not, sorry. This is, we're, we're showing anchor bolts here. We're actually going to mudsill anchors which wrap around the outside so you don't have to drill or preset the anchor bolts in the foundation the idea there is when we're doing the finished concrete work, we don't want any bolts to be in there because we want that to be a super easy job for a power trowel, which is very quick and effective. Uh, floor plan of the first floor, kitchen, bathroom, stairway, second floor, two bedroom, two bath. We can also think about dividing the upper floor into three bedrooms. Uh, this is actually old. There's a bathroom on just like this here on the upper floor. So this is a little old here. Okay, roof profile has been updated. So if uh, you examine the current design now, uh, the distinction is that now we have a flat. So here we have a set of roof joists that are absolutely flat and we ended up cutting tapers for the angle. Before, what we had was a simple roof riser sitting under the roof joist that provided the angle because we thought, oh, well, to cut all those joists uh, those tapers at an angle is a lot of work. Well, you have to cut uh, eight, six, or nine, 16 foot pieces. But the advantage here is this, this simplifies the interior finishing tremendously on the second floor. Here, what you see is that the slant here is actually, uh, makes for a complication when we had a slanted roof, uh, slanted, uh, joist set of roof joists before so now this all becomes flat the green stuff here that's all flat now so that actually what you see here is the old version where we had the slant inside the house which as you can imagine with these triangles and a slight incline uh, puts a lot of lot of requirement on finishing detail it may we go, we're going back to the box super simple much faster to build uh, so that's the slant 5.5 inches on top. This is cut out of a 2x6 and this is a 2x6 at the end going to 0 inches. It's a 5.5 inch rise over 16 feet. There's a decorative trellis, gutter, uh, similar to before. All right, canopy, you can see that. Uh, carport footers, that, those are going to be augered with a 22 inch auger. We'll probably end up building that. So here's the PV, here's the conceptual design of what we're doing there. Very simple design. Two by six spanning members, steel brackets holding down the spanning members, and then the PV panels are attached by these, these kind of steel, steel angles. Uh, something easy that you can fabricate readily from angle uh, without welding. Uh, we submitted our plans to the engineer for structural engineering. That's where we're at. We're looking for land right now. Here's a uh, detail of the, the mud sill anchors that we'll be using. This is the kind of technique we'll use so that the entire uh, floor can be finished. This actually, the, this vertical part here is going to be bent down so that we're not in the way of the concrete finishing equipment. Carpet footers, three feet down, interior wall structure, front elevation, back, and sides, that's what it looks like. 
And this is all for open collaboration. So let's look at the files in FreeCAD. Uh, this is the, the master part library. And the con uh, we'll get back to that because this is where the collaborative part uh, goes. Uh, files from here, we've got the full model. Now we're going to uh, generate modular details that can uh, such that we can extract bills of materials readily from the overall FreeCAD file. Okay, if you want to look at what this looks like for the build, the idea is still the same. You've got human-sized panels that you put into place. And that's, that's effectively, the model still stands. That's, that's how we build 4x8. In fact, it's actually 4x9 primarily as far as the panels go. Budget. Okay, so summary of the budget. Now you can click on a detailed link, but what's the deal? If we for turnkey builds, the thousand square foot model is right now at 200k in Kansas in a place like Kansas City, assuming land costs, etc. This would be using standard production. Now, if you wanted to go DIY, uh, that's much less expensive. So 94,000. If you want to go DIY in a city where uh, land is going to be a little, well, we're putting 25k for land, 25,000 DIY in the country. It's about $68,000, $69,000. So once again, the main thing is there's a $60,000 material cost and uh, some other costs added on top of that. So the various scenarios from turnkey builds to if you build it yourself for $69,000. Uh, this is our utility channel design. Still, this stands um, basically wire raceway through all the panels. This is slightly controversial, though we should not have problems going through codes with this. We've got this verified by code officials. Um, so let's zoom out of this one and go into the master files. So what are we doing for CAD collaboration? Okay, the final model is here. The latest, latest on a Seed Home V2 3D CAD master files is right here. You can download it. So we can go right ahead and download that from here. But what are the next steps? So this, um, well, let's take a look at what the actual file looks like. So, and we have this in a simple uh, part tree here. So if we hide everything here, uh, this is what we get. Uh, so starting from first, not first floor, even you got foundation, our slab with insulated shallow frost protected footer first floor that's the floor above that move on to the second story move on to the roof so you can see that slant now uh, you can see that the, the roof just are going to be flat and the slant is obtained by tapers and you can actually if we separate the roof out, take a look at that. You've got roof rafters, you've got the tapers, so these are cut. So you've got the decking, you've got the rigid insulation, you've got box around that. That's the roof. Now next on is PV panels. Take a look at that, these brackets that I showed. Oh, what's this? With? Okay, I gotta fix this thing. That's for some reason that's up there. Um, now roof trim. So at the end of the day, we have this this kind of a structure, this decorative trellis, as you saw in the pictures, makes it look attractive. And there's the carport. Now, as far as interior, we shut everything down. Hey, that's what all the guts look like. Kitchen, stairs, bathrooms on each floor. Uh, bathroom on the first floor appears to be missing, uh, but that's the interior. Now, um, there's a numbering of these all these wall modules, so let's shut that down and go look at floor one. And then, not floor one, but first floor and second, second floor. So that's like the main, main structure here. And right here we've got uh, for a start, the 48 modules. It's like uh, that is like 1 through 23 going around the outside, and then 24 through like 47 on the top. 
And then if you go to the interior, there's a bunch of walls that are numbered like, well, if you go on the bottom floor, um, If you look at the interior, the walls there are they're numbered pretty much like one, two, three, and so forth, to about about thirty or so interior modules. So each one of these, like that's once again a four by nine sections. So uh, they're all numbered. Now, how do we uh, store this on the internet on the wiki? So here's our own, all of our master files. But you go down here. Uh, the two things we want to do right now is build cheat sheets and I'll show you how to do that so build cheat sheets for every single module all right so where are all the modules they're here so first floor exterior uh, second floor exterior uh, so that's that's going up to 40 48 now we've got interior but let's worry about the first 1 through 48 for the exterior wall modules. And there's more complicated ones like windows, for example, and doors, but otherwise they're relatively simple. But when we're building these, each person gets a cheat sheet. Okay, so I was actually starting on foundation. Um, cheat sheets like, oh, here's the one panel on the interior wall. This is, um, and this you can understand, our standard four by, by nine panel. This we generate readily out of FreeCAD. So in this presentation, I'll show you exactly how to do that. And we're working in FreeCAD 16. And the idea here is go through. So here we've got all these, uh, these are interior walls. But for these build cheat sheets from here, uh, I covered all the interior walls, um, pretty much most of them. And now we want to go through all the exterior ones, including the sheathing and framing and blocking where all of those elements will show up in our detailed uh, drawings, like these little details, where you can see all the framing. Like here from the side profile, you can actually see that there's sheathing there. Um, so you've got all those relevant dimensions there with sheeting being a four by eight sheet, so it's just a plain sheet. So how do we extract this from FreeCAD, okay? So let's go into FreeCAD. I'll show you how to do that. Take the first one, wall module one, exterior. Uh, we actually have a placeholder for build cheat sheets, but uh, actually let's do the, put them up in this section here so they're readily visible right here. Uh, since since it's useful to get one of these pictures like like this for example you know we can take that put that right into our build cheat sheets where we prepare instructions for anyone building this so we basically have to cut things to length and screw them as as needed okay so take a look at the first uh, wall section in the previous meeting I described the three file types file type one two and three so here's a, a file type three here, which means just a dumb object of the entire file. So we're going to open that up. So maybe you can shut out of this document, open up a new file, open. I just downloaded this file. No, that's, that's not it. Let's do this one. So in each of these, you have to look at the file history and you have to look at whether there's a build cheat sheet for it already. And how do we mark that? So here on the wiki, we'll go, if this one's already done, then we can do something like, um, we can add, there's a little thing you can do like check is this thing, this this little format here. Let's see if that works. Yeah. 
So uh, this check what I just put in through that syntax, you can do check. Um, check means that it's done on the cheat sheet. So anytime the cheat sheet is done, we put a check. Um, but we want to put these cheat sheets up in this section here. So we go back, um, so we're trying to extract the build cheat sheet. We're gonna open up the one I just downloaded. Wrong. I'm gonna go to another one. I'm gonna erase this check from here. I'm gonna start on, start on module two. Um, you have to go through the version history of each part to see where, you know, which files are available. So here, once again, that FCSTD. So here, uh, say we've got this one, one thing here. And now we're looking at, this is August, 2021. So you see that this is, you can read this file history. You see the latest thing is in 2021. Well, that is not the latest. So the general procedure here will be to go to the master file and extract the individual module from the master file. So this is work we've done. This is um, almost a year ago now. So we're going to go back. Whenever we see an old file, we're going to go back to the, to the master file. So here, what you're going to have to do is go back to master file, download this latest freaking file. This is 07-29-22. You go here uh, and you download that. Just click on that. So working file. I'm going to open that up. So what is the point of the working file, the, the latest, latest file? This is, updates have been made to it. Uh, there might be little changes. So it's the safest bet to work from it. This is what I just downloaded, right? That's the one. So here we go. That's the that's what exists on a, on the internet right now. Uh, this has been organized. Maybe slight changes have been made and things like that. But the the wall module of interest. Let's hide. Let's hide the cart part. And the module we want is. Uh, is is in here, but let's let's start with one, for example. Since we're all working on this file here, let's let's do uh, first floor. Okay. So I'm gonna, for now, I'm just gonna erase everything. This is, since I just downloaded that. What do we got? Well, this has got everything in it. We wanna separate this into individual files. And here's an exercise what I'll do is, because this is our master file at the very, very end, for everybody to be on the same page, we wanna work with a, with a master file. And wall module one is this one here. So we want to extract it. Now, how do you get from this one monolithic file into breaking this down into all the individual parts? Well, one way to do it, and this is what you can do is export this as a step file. And what it does is it will break this down. So floor one step, this will break it once you, once you then import it again, so I'm going to shut this file down. Um, I'm going to open up file. I'm going to import a step file. So this is the floor one step file. So this has got everything. Now what you'll notice in the part tree is that now this thing has separated this into a bunch, a large bunch of parts. Now, if you wanted to do like a, so for example, this, this sheeting is one object, but you can basically select, 
So say you want to, so now, you, you know, like there's all this stuff around here. This, what you notice broke this down into every, every single part. Good. Well, I'm going to extract module number one. So this is, you have to play with this a little bit, but, um, so that's the cell plate, bottom plate. So module one. That's also not, doesn't belong there. Um, so you can select, so let's just kind of clean this up here. Um, you have to now, you'll notice that this whole file is going to be, uh, man, there's a, so many parts. So right there you see there's 361 parts on the first floor. Whoa, and, it, and this, this is where it gets really hard to work with unless you start organizing this. But what you want to do is click on each of the parts. Like for example here, that's where, that's, you can select those parts in the part tree. And you have to identify um, where exactly all those parts are. So here we see that, whoa, it's all, it's all here. No, this one I don't care about. No, no. So here I've got like all these parts. These parts here. That is our module. Now here we've got absolutely individual parts, and this would be good for like now you can label all these and uh, in the final, very very final file. You want to label these correctly so that, if, for example, you could call this this one here. Uh, rename that and call it the nine foot pre-cut stud, etc. What we know is we've got these to work with and everything else below that. We can erase that. And, and I notice here that unlike typical process, not able to erase everything here. So what I'll do first is I'm going to save that as a free cut document. So right now we're, this is the, the set file that we imported. So I'm going to call this module one. And I'm probably seeing a free cat bug here because it's not letting me uh, erase parts. So I'm going to go back into module one again. The typical behavior is if you click on something in a part tree, you should be able to simply hit backspace. So we just reopen this up. I'm expecting the behavior where if I click on anything and whatever that happened in the part tree, uh, if I click back, backspace, it deletes it. So right now I'm actively clicking and hitting backspace here so you can do that. But let's go back to this one. So I'm going to find it where it is in the part tree. So this, this is basically a way to like, if you have complicated files with so many parts you can't handle, which is going to be at the end of the day, what's, what's happens here? How do you manage this? Uh, so we're going to go, so we know again, is this our entire module? Yes, it is. So I'm going to erase everything outside of it. Um, and then erase everything above it. And 
And here's my module of interest. So, so this is a long way that combines the ability to, to label these parts properly as they would be uh, recognizable when you're generating bill of materials. So ninth of pre-cut stud is there, etc. But what I wanted to show is how you generate a 2D fabrication drawing from this. Okay, so the main thing you have to remember now is inside there's a module, a workbench called Drawing Dimensioning, and this is not supported anymore. It's an old thing, but it's a great thing for quick and dirty fabrication drawings. Now there's the Tech Draw workbench and newer newer versions of FreeCAD. We're not using that. That has a learning curve. Here you can learn this in about one minute, and I'll show you exactly. So, but the first thing you have to do is you need to turn, because the drawing dimensioning and any kind of a part um, tech draw workbench typically works with only one part. One part. So you got to simply uh, collapse it into one part. So in part workbench, you can go to make a compound. And that's it. So there you go. Uh, if you use this compound now, you can select this compound. And now you go into, so it's, it's highlighted. You go into drawing dimensioning. There you go. I'm in drawing dimensioning. I need to click on A3, which is insert new drawing. There you go, like magic. And then I have to click on this, shortcut to drawing ortho views command. So this, this basically selects the views for you. Bam, that's it. Gives you this dialog here. And this is all I do. That, hey, that's good enough. That, that's enough information. I want to see like the, the forward uh, face of it the side view and that now you can start putting in dimensions how do you do that simply click on this arrow here dimension arrow and start selecting points there you go uh, you can continue just dragging um, in between two points so that's it turns out that module is actually 42.5 which is correct um, you can mark these dimensions So far, so that's that's what you do, uh, and this is basically what we do. So that will be the beginning of module one, uh, and how do you save it? Well, uh, go back to master part files, master master files, and here we're at module one here. So I'll actually what I can do is upload this over the last existing file here. Um, and what you see here, just in terms of general file management, this is like C Home V2 CAD, and this is our current build that we're carrying out into the the into the future. So we can actually upload the new versions of the files. Right here. So we're extracting from the MasterCAD file up here from this one and we're putting putting this in here as our build cheat sheets so I'm going to show an example of how I just put in one build cheat sheet so you can replicate this cheat sheets are all here so build cheat sheets uh, as you see the gallery function there um, I'm going to set up another one that's for exterior cheat sheets, uh, exterior wall. And I'm going to call it exterior wall one. So I extracted this from this, the MasterCAD file, and then the file we're actually saving. So when I say MasterCAD file, that means the CAD file under this, this section called MasterCAD files, the main one, which is the overall house, the complete house. 
So I'm going to say here exterior wall one. So now I set up a new new gallery. It will set up a placeholder like this here. So nothing is in here. So I want to basically put in a picture here. How do you do that? Well, I'm going to do a screenshot here and using a screenshot. There you go. Uh, I can screenshot, yeah, call it whatever. I save it on my desktop. Now, the file name that it's looking for here is exterior wall one. How do you upload files? This is under wiki instructions, upload file. So I'm gonna do this file here, but the name has to be, it says exterior wall one. Okay, upload that file. Great. So I have my cheat sheets book, bookmark here. So that, that should show up. You have to control R for refresh and it may not refresh until uh, a little bit of time. There, refresh. So now I, I, so that's what I just put in. Now the exterior wall one, I'm gonna upload the file that's the working one that I was just working with, module one. Okay, so now what we have here, just ignore this, ignore this and save the file anyway. So under the cheat sheets now, we've got this first exterior wall file. And this is it. So I showed you a process whereby you, you extract so, so this from the overall CAD file, which you downloaded. And I showed you how to generate now a drawing dimensioning drawing from the Supermaster CAD file. And you notice that the master, the very, very final master cat file is the working file from which we want to extract everything so that everyone is coordinated because that's the latest file. And it does have all the members and everything in there with a correct, uh, it's as correct as it gets right now. This is what we've come up with to date. Um, so from it, you can extract. I showed you here. Um, yeah, actually when you, when, what happens here, this this uh, compound, it also has, when you go to part and you do make compound, you see that it collapses at all, but you can, you can still see all the parts are inside. Um, and I showed you how to do that by, by exporting as a step file. Now, if you delete that, it actually spits out all the interior parts. And when you have all the interior parts, listed like this, that's where you get the bills of materials. And that's another topic. But, uh, but basically, you have part by part, you can uh, analyze this whole model. For now, we can extract all the different ex exterior wall mast um, label here should be exterior wall, not master cat file, but, but build cheat sheet. So this is what we'll use right in the workshop to build from. And that's it. So if you can replicate this, replicate this process, modules 1 through 48 of the exterior walls using the master file. So master file, using this file, go through the process I showed to extract the cheat sheets. Uh, first one being here. So if you click edit on this, all you need to do is add additional lines to this until we've got 48 of these. And this can be broken down into a large team of people working on together if they understand this. So you only know, do is change this to wall two, exterior wall two. Now, so basically this turns into a huge accounting exercise and of course you can start automating this uh, with Python and FreeCAD and so forth. Uh, so yeah, here's a placeholder for exterior wall two. Uh, so anyone who wants to contribute to this, please do so. The way you know that this is done, uh, like here I put this check on it. Check means that it's completely done, but it's not done yet. I didn't complete that. Um, so I'm going to remove that check. Uh, so until we see a check mark by all these wall modules here, we know we're not done yet. So that would be our um, 
our marker you've got the individual files here like I want to see checks appear after each one of these so that we know we're finally we finally got all the build cheat sheets ready that's our main milestone once we have the build cheat sheets it's pretty much what you need to, to get a person to do exactly what you need them to do in a large swarm build where we build actually like 48 of them at the same time I mean if we have 48 people uh, each person can take one of the modules and there's like se about 70 altogether. So the, the practical limit is there's 70 modules between interior and exterior. And then of course you got a bunch more. Uh, so 70 people you can easily fit on a site, <laughs> but imagine 70 people with a helper, like 140 people, bam, they could knock, knock all these walls out in about an hour and then we can assemble. So, I mean, you can really think of radical uh, time efficiencies uh, for time saving of how fast you can build these things and you see how, kind of how this modular structure allows you to have a lot of people work on it together. And we did already show that last year like uh, the first floor story, uh, first story of the house with uh, a bunch of uh, unskilled volunteers or, or participants in the workshop we were able to put up the whole first floor in one hour so that once again the the time compression here is quite real using this kind of modular method. That's it, so help us do the cheat sheets and we'll see you next week.